action game on. Got my rods and reels. It's the real deal. With all the years I've spent traveling the world in search of amazing fishing, I've yet to explore the island and waters of Curacao. I've heard stories of the excellent blue marlin fishing, the exceptional accommodations, and everything else you'd expect on an island that's world class. My type of party. Curacao is a small island. It's joined by Aruba and Bonaire, and they make up the ABC islands of the Dutch Caribbean. It's amazing that on one end of the spectrum, you have this European experience, complete with architecture and all the culture, while on the other end, you have areas distinctly Caribbean with breathtaking coastlines, small villages, and incredible home-cooked food. I think this combination of flavor on one slice of island real estate is quite honestly the Caribbean's best kept secret. It's a short visit, but fortunately the Curacao Tourism Board is taking good care of everything. They've asked us to come to showcase their beautiful country and their 48th annual International Blue Marlin Tournament. I am truly honored. With only four days to visit, I have a tight schedule to get the most out of my time. I'm geared up to photograph the northern and eastern ends of Curacao on my first day here, checking out some local flavor and searching for some unique tourist attractions. Then, on my next day, I'll be touring around the city that's rich in culture, the remarkable Williamstad. After that, it's a two-day tournament. I'll be fishing aboard the Lady Gusta with the owner, Raleigh Parrott, a local legend, so I'm told, along with his crew, Raleigh's friend Harvey, a very experienced and avid angler from the Netherlands, and on the wheel, John Jasser, a young but experienced captain who's fished these waters his entire life. Collectively, we've got a team that definitely has a shot at a title in this two-day competition. Of course, what I'm really here for are the festivities, the famous parties they throw during every day of this tournament. From the day you arrive for registration to the final awards banquet, they provide all the food and party huge with live music every night. I mean, it is incredible. And a huge turnout with local families and those from surrounding countries, all coming together celebrating the sport of blue water fishing. If you want to see how great marlin tournaments can be ran, stay tuned. It's the middle of March. I'm stoking oh. down in the Southern Caribbean where the weather is hot and the drinks are cold. I am proud to bring you this week's IGFA Angler's Digest. IGFA Angler's Digest is proudly sponsored by Tropic Star Lodge, Guy Harvey Ocean Foundation, Kobe and Footwear, Step into Quality, Comfort, and Performance, Mojo Sportswear. Get your mojo on today. Halco Lures, making smart fish dumb, wild ocean for the future of fishing. On my first day on the island, I was treated to a tour by the Curacao Tourism Board. From the start, they were really great in accommodating our travels here, and I was really looking forward to seeing all the treasures Curacao had to offer. I'd be spending the day with our tour guide, Clarina Gomez. She sure made tracks, giving us as much Curacao exploration as we could possibly fit in. You feel that wind? That's a trade wind. Down here in the ABC Islands, Right, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curacao. The ABCs get a lot of trade winds this time of year. And smartly, the Dutch, being the Dutch, who for centuries have utilized wind to their advantage, are again utilizing wind for their advantage. One of the few islands here in the Caribbean that we've seen experienced where they're actually utilizing solar and wind for their power generation. What this is, is actually, from what we understand, an old uh, slave's quarters. And uh, from what they say is the angle of the house clues you in on that architecture. And then the roof, historically, was made out of the corn stalks, because they would grow corn for a food source here in the islands, and then use the corn stalks as a roof. The reason why the little oven is outside is because of the fire potential of having a fire inside of a house with all that corn stalk just right above you where the heat would rise. It's so cool to just walk in here and check all this out. I mean, what a simple life they had. Amazing, huh? And I have to tell you, I'm the fortunate that each one's home. Yeah? I born here. No way! I, yes, I live here. Yeah? I want to show you. Sure. I want to show you just a little photo. Me yes. and my new queen. No way, that's cool! That's amazing! <laughs> that is so amazing! Yes. That's the queen of, uh, of Holland. Holland. Yes, Queen Maxima. The Queen Maxima of Holland was here, you met yes. her. Yes, and uh, two, two weeks ago, she sent me, they sent me uh, a present. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You gotta be so proud! <laughs> I saw Holland. I saw Holland. <laughs> <laughs> 
is a Catholic cemetery. 80% of the island's Catholic. But this cemetery, they, they bury people above the ground because of the soil type. It's just, uh, it's not good to put you under. We finally arrive at the National Park, Shiniboka. It's an area covering more than six miles of this rocky northern coast. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like the energy of the sea to rich in your soul. Just the sound and the smell here is amazing. Yeah, there's actually some sea caves here. And you can see it's quite, it's quite an attraction. Everybody's come down here to take a look at it. Yeah, this is such dramatic light. It's really tough to get a photograph of these conditions because the light's changing with every wave that comes in here. That is awesome. This is actually a public beach called Knip Beach, and uh, it's way over here, right, on the, on the east end. And they say there's public camping. You could literally come here and camp out for the weekend. I mean, personally, if I came from anywhere to here to Curacao, I'd pack a hammock, a little stove, a little tent, sleeping bag, come and hang here for a couple of days. You can see there's scuba divers down here, people free diving, people diving off these cliffs. And I guarantee if you came here at night and fished with a little bait, you'd probably get snappers and stuff off here. What an awesome spot. I mean, this is a forgotten little beach to only really locals and a few tourists know about it. Knip Beach. Make sure you check it out when you come to Curacao. It was a spectacular day, and I couldn't wait to check out the historic downtown Williamstad the next day. This is so cool. This is, this is downtown Curacao in a town called Williamstad. The cool thing about this, it's so European. They've got a ferry service, which is free. And above and beyond that, they got a really cool, what they call a floating bridge. It's hinged on this east side of the, of the bridge, and it's literally floating boats with a bridge attached to it. And it'll power itself out across the channel and hook up with the other side. So you have two options to get from this side of Williamstad to the downtown area, which is an island. I can't wait to get over there. This is a whole new Caribbean experience for me. The Blue Marlin Cafe. I like those guys already. This feels so different than any place I've ever been in the Caribbean. There's so much European flair here. Literally within about one city block, we went from Europe to the Caribbean. Here we are now in a, in a, in a little local uh, eatery where it's literally all these different types of foods and stands right here. So you come, you put in your order, and you just walk along these stands to pick what it is you want to eat. And this is very, very Caribbean, from the music, to the people, to the food. Now, I feel like I'm in the Caribbean. Whoa. Enjoy your meal. I will. It's unbelievably fresh. You've got five-star dining here, and you've got local dining like this. Curacao has it all. This is a really cool part of Williamstad as well. This is called the Venezuelan Floating Market. And these boats come from Venezuela, which is 38 miles away. And they come inside the harbor here, anchor up, and sell their goods. They've got a lot of fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, things like that. A great place to shop. And of course, Curacao has some beautiful golf courses with several fairways right along the ocean shore to perfect your game in scenic splendor. Here we are at the Curacao Yacht Club. Why are we here? We're here because they're having the Curacao Blue Marlin Invitational Tournament, which is a big event here in the Southern Caribbean. In fact, there's about 35 boats here to fish this event, nine of which came from neighboring Aruba. So it promises to be a pretty gamey tournament because of the weather here, but there's a lot of Blue Marlin in these waters this time of year. So the next morning we get down to the uh, Yacht Club Hooked up with Raleigh and John on the 46-foot uh, Bertram, the Lady Tusa. We got a Harvey as the mate. <laughs> the mate, the mate fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> so we get on the boat, and I immediately realize that this is just going to be a, a walk in the park for, uh, for Raleigh. He's not one of these really serious guys who has all his lures all laid out, all the rods just impeccably set up for the tournament. It's basically pull him off the rack, get him out there, let's put something in the water. So I was kind of sizing him up as an angler, as a teammate that day, and come to find out he's a very accomplished, very decorated light tackle angler. So I knew I'm fishing with a pretty serious guy. Woo, fishing. So his choice of tackle for the day was a 30 pound outfit. I chose a 50 pound, as did Harvey. We just came out of the cut. Line's in at eight o'clock. 
We didn't go out three minutes. We already had lines in. Because it drops off here, you're already in 1,000 feet of water, just about a quarter of a mile from the start. So the cool thing about that, we're literally five minutes away from, from the uh, harbor, and we're already fishing marlin. We got out to the offshore there, and he had a beautiful assortment of lures. Anything, he, anything I saw in his uh, lure bag would get bit in any waters I would fish internationally. Yeah, Raleigh was saying we should put a teaser out. <laughs> Man, we're gonna tease a, a blue whale today. No, this is gone. <laughs> this is the extreme breakfast from Bart Miller, world famous guy from Kona. He makes an amazing line of lures. But this one we put out there for a teaser. So anything that comes up and takes a look at this, what we're offering is a snack. <laughs> Hopefully the blue marlins are bigger than the teaser, man. <laughs> <laughs> so having chatted with Raleigh and found his history, I wanted to go up on top, talk to Captain John, a young kid. Kind of want to see where his start was in sport fishing here at Curacao. Come to find out, his father was literally the tournament director. So I know I'm in a, in a fishy family uh, with, with a, a, good, a good bead on the local uh, marlin fishing there. Now this tournament lines in at 8 a.m. There were already fish being hooked up in the first half hour. We fished for about an hour and a half, no activity, but boats are hooking up. So we're thinking to ourselves, you know, as you always do as an angler, hmm, do we have the right color out? Are we fishing the right head for these windy, windy conditions? Because let's be honest, it was really windy. So we changed the pattern up, and guess what? Five minutes later, we got bit. Didn't stick around long. It's one of those lure bites, pull some line, come unbuttoned. That's probably a 700 pound blue back there, man. Did you hear that thing pop? Woo! Oh, for one. We're gonna switch it out a little bit. These boats are getting bit. One boat about two miles away just got a nice blue release. Another boat about five miles away had a double header on Blue Marlin. We got the fad buoys here. Wahoo are probably a year-round resident. And this tournament has awards for Wahoo, Tuna, and Marlin. Atta boy. So that morning bite kind of died, and we see the we see the fleet start to disperse in the direction of Little Curacao Island. So we thought, hey, we don't want to be the last ones there. So we headed out, followed the group, trolling out there, get out to Little Curacao. We probably had about 15 boats working that area. No activity. Kind of off the tide at that point. But all of a sudden, around noon, the radio started buzzing. The bite started to establish itself again, right back at the drop off. So guess what we did? We went back to the drop off. We put out the spread. Five minutes later, bam, bite again. Doesn't stick. Dog on it, right? Whoa, there it is, there it is. About five minutes later though, the long rigger, which happened to be Raleigh's 30 pound outfit, gets bit and it is peeling line. Woo lines in boys, lines in. Yeah, we're bit. We got it in, started backing down on that fish but it is just smoking that 30. And it doesn't look like it's gonna stop. This is a sizable, sizable fish. Raleigh's angling skills became immediately apparent. He did an unbelievable job on the 30 pound, trying to get as much line as he could back on that reel to get that fish, and it just wasn't enough. The fish came unbuttoned. I think it's gone. Bummer. That could have been, who knows? I mean, we never saw the fish, but judging from the, from the amount of line it dumped, it took a half a spool of line off that. Probably a blue marlin, definitely the way it, it took it and ate it and ran it. Doggone it. Oh. To Raleigh's credit and what we had experienced in the morning, a lot of fish had been seen and hooked, but not landed. The hookup ratio in this tournament was very low, and I attribute that to the, to the very rough sea conditions. Hey, we had our shots. We had our shots? We did. We had two shots. Yep, two shots, and you got a Wahoo that clipped us off. Probably, yes. That was a $50, $50 bite. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't always about off. fishing. It's about making friends. Dig it. Making friends, making friends great friends, yeah. conversation, and just sharing stories. So, no thing. Harvey, <laughs> most fun fishing yeah, yeah. thing, man. Thank well, you, man. Thank really, you. really a lot of fun hey, with nice you guys, man. Thank you. A few more stories on the beach. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
IGFA Angler's Digest. Proudly sponsored by Reactor Watches. Best built performance sports watch. Period. King Sailfish Mounts. From the water to your wall. Tough line. Braided lines for the toughest fish. Bubba Blaze. The ultimate sportsman's knife. The Los Cabos Tourism Board. The next morning, I go down to the docks. They're hooked up with Steve and Shannon, who happen to have this little Boston whaler. I'm really, really glad we're doing this today. This is going to be a ton of fun. It's going to be amazing. We have some high winds, too, but yep. we're going to make it happen. See where the big barracudas are. See if there's any other hungry, tooty predator out here. And we're going to catch some fun. Yeah. Well, let's get it on, man. Let's get it on. Come, Come on. on. Yeah. Oh, these are beautiful mangroves. Really fun. Okay. Okay. Look at this. The sun's out. We've got this greasy, calm water. And offshore, it's blowing about 20 knots right now. And that's that's so nice to know you've got all this inshore fishery here. Hook us up, brother man. Hook us up. Yeah, like you see, just no weight at all. It's just going to barely skip back there really quietly. We're fishing barracudas, having a good time. The cool thing about Steve and Shannon, they're cousins. And it's actually Shannon's family's boat. And they share this amazing passion for fishing. Shannon, did you call, call up the fish to eat? Oh, shoot, I forgot. Shannon, that's oh, your job to call the fish, oh girl. It's so, it's so good to know there's no cicateria problems here, because that explains why it's such a, a favorite food fish. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know why, but we don't have anything of that. I've eating, been eating them for about 29 years already. And they're giving us a great local history of the whole fishing operations there in Curacao. Oh, oh, got bit. Oh. Not a knot, I got bit. Let me, let me check my bait. Just the weed. Let's try the, the other bay and see what we can get. Okay. And we go about to a spot called Fook Bay, which we actually had seen when we were doing a tour of the Spanish Bay golf course. Yeah. I'm bit. Yeah. There it is, there it is. Coming up from the above. All right. Cool little fish. Now, this would be a really good eating size, yeah, right? Yeah, this one is perfect. The bigger ones tend to be a little stiffer. The meat gets stiff. Yep. So lovely this size. This would be just yeah. the, the candy fish, right? The candy fish. 10 kilos regular here. You know your man. fishery. You really know your fishery. Perfect. Captain Shannon at the <laughs> wheel. Perfect. Now, this is a tough condition. We've got a lot of breeze going, and we're really slow trolling. When you're slow trolling up way on the boat's trying to do this, you've really been really, really doing a great job. Yep. It's a skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was awful sporty out there, but the sport fishing was a little slow. <laughs> but you know what? We'll appreciate, really appreciate your efforts today. Pick us up out here this morning at the Yacht Club. Take us out to some of your secret spots, some of your secret spots. Well, and. Uh, they were so secret, even the fish didn't know where they were this morning. <laughs> you know, every time with fishing, you never know. You That's never right. know. And we did our best, and we got one. Yep. So one is better than none. But the one thing I do know is I've got two new friends in Curacao. And that's you, Steve. Of course. Thank that you, was Bill. really, really cool. Thank you, Bill. Shannon, nice that was really, really cool of you My to take pleasure. us out, man. Thank you. We go to the banquet that night, and what a festivity. Unbelievable how many families were there, how many kids were enjoying themselves. You rarely see a tournament venue where it's so family orientated. <laughs> During the ceremonial award uh, banquet, I had to look for Bill John Cure, the, the director of the tournament and uh, president of the club there. And I had to thank him for A, having us come down for the tournament, but B, congratulate him on what an amazing venue it is that they put out. And I wanted him to explain to me what that's all about in the eyes of the club. What we try to do in the tournament is to make sure that everybody enjoys it, not only the fishing, but after and before the fishing. We think it's very important that, that the family's part of it. Don't forget, a lot of the guys that have fished 30, 40 years are getting older. So we want the little kids to learn how to fish. So what we have in our fishing tournament is not only the fishing out there, but we have a little kids fishing tournament for kids up to 13 years old. And as a matter of fact, the tournament this year was won by a junior angler which makes it more interesting, of course, that more kids get interested in doing the fishing. Yeah, well, this is my son. <laughs> and um, uh, um, he's been going with me fishing ever since he was four years old. I think uh, we caught our, our first blue uh, when he was four years old, and he just went crazy, he went berserk. That's for him. <laughs> That's the largest tuna. 
our first, our first price, price. Exactly. And hopefully many more to come. Yeah? Mm -hmm. If we get the fats up and running, working, and it will be even more fun. We have parties, we enjoy, we have a good time. And I hope that everybody comes for sure next year. And I want to make sure that the 50th anniversary, which we're going to double the prize money, that everybody, that we get some visitors, especially out of the U.S. and North American market. The biggest surprise to me, they're giving out all the awards and trophies. They call up second place. Raleigh, John, Harvey grabbed me and said, you're coming up on stage to get your trophy. I thought, no, no, you guys got this double header today, not yesterday. And they looked at me and said, no, you fished hard all day yesterday. You put up with those swells and that wind and those conditions. You deserve to be on this platform just as much as we do. I was a little embarrassed to go up there and grab this trophy because it absolutely was caught that second day. But I thought that was so cool of them to include me in this. What it all taught me was how amazingly friendly and how hospitable these Curacao anglers and this yacht club is. In fact, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to come back down next year to be a part of the 50th annual tournament and hopefully be on a winning boat again. Having never been to Curacao before, I was really excited about the opportunity to go down there because I knew there's a lot of history in Curacao, starting from the Spanish going to the English, but it was really great to actually be on island and share some of that history with myself. Being a photographer, I had a great time touring around the Curacao Tourism Board. We had a really, really good time, and I just really can't wait to come back. I lost my mojo. <laughs> I found my mojo. In fact, I was almost lost without my mojo. Ah. <laughs> oh.